Welcome to the workshop. It's time to mod, so let's go to the workbench and get your screwdriver out and your hammer and... Today we will look at how to mod the P226 depending on what you need. First things first, as you've probably seen in the other video, best way to get a P226 is by simply trading for knives at Peacekeeper. Otherwise, just get it on the flea market is usually around 10,000 rubles or even less. And that's early wipe, so it will go down even further. So now that we have the pistol, let's look at the vital parts first. And first we have different sliders. And yes, I mean, they add some value, but I mean, 1-2% recoil less and 1-2 ergonomics more for 5 to 10,000? How about no? Then to the barrel, and that's a pretty easy one. If you want to mount anything, a silencer or a muzzle bike in front, you need the longer barrel. So that's an easy grab. Then to the pistol grips. And that's also a pretty easy one. If you look at the ergonomic gain per ruble, there's a clear winner. Rubber with finger growth pistol grip for P226. So if you think you need those four ergonomics more, then go for that grip. But the pistol has around 80 ergonomics anyway. I don't think you need four more. So I wouldn't spend those rubles. Unless you want to compensate for a silencer. Then the magazines. And at first glance, you look at it and might go, what? A thousand rubles more for just five bullets more? That's insane, Peacekeeper, what the hell? But if you actually calculate the rubles per bullet that you pay, it's just 50 rubles more per bullet, which isn't that bad. So I would pick the bigger magazine because five bullets more can make a difference. And we come to the very interesting stuff, and that is muzzle attachments. And first we have the protection cap, which just adds one ergonomic, so whatever. Next we have the TJ compensator, which is amazing. Minus 12% recoil for just around 3000 rubles. That's so if you just want less recoil, that's the thing for you. And we have, of course, different silencer, and they're pretty expensive usually, but they're usually way cheaper on the flea market. So let's compare them. So in sound, I think they're all pretty equally. Only one, the AAC, is just worse. But it's also the cheapest one, so yeah. I still prefer because the bullet is so quiet anyway. I mean, difference isn't really that much. But if you want the best sound suppression with the best overall values, then go for the Osprey 9. Then scopes, and there are two ways how you can mount scope. Either do a bridge and don't use the OM3. It's so expensive. Just use the bridge for the P226. Or you can mount scopes directly at the back. So I think it's down to personal preference. You see the difference here. I think with the attachment on the back, the scope is a lot closer to me. At least it feels that way. So I prefer that, but it's down to personal preference. And here we compare the different scopes. And as you can see, I think all the other scopes are just, just, just too big. And they obstruct the vision, I don't like that. I prefer the Burris Fastfire, which is also one of the cheapest one, and it's available at Peacekeeper at the very beginning of the game, level 1. In order to place it, just place the Fast Fever base, and then on top the scope. And finally, tactical devices, that's just down to personal preference. You want a hip fire, take a laser pointer. You want to blind the enemies, take a flashlight. And here I recommend the X400, it's the cheapest one at Peacekeeper. And there you go! Now you're an expert at modding a P226 and you can use this knowledge to create the best version of the P226 that will be feared all over Tarkov. Or you do something else. <laughs> and that's it. If you liked the video of course smash like, subscribe to the channel for more, tell me in the comment section how it went and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye!